Hi, I'm Cubition, and this is a tutorial on how to navigate the interface of LMMS. There are several parts to the interface. First, there's the top bar, the sidebar, and then the workspace, which contains the sub-windows. The sub-windows include the song editor, which is a general overview of the song you're working on, including all of the different tracks and instruments, as well as their volume plotted on a graph of what is playing when it is playing. There is also the FX mixer, which is where you can do mixing, such as increasing and decreasing the volume of different tracks and applying effects to groups of tracks as well. There's the controller rack, which is where different controllers will show up and their properties can be edited. And then there's also the beat and baseline editor, which doesn't appear when you first create a project but is a very important part of LMMS. In addition to these core components, we also have the piano roll, the automation editor, and the project notes. Project notes are just a text editor and aren't very important, but the piano roll and automation editor are very important and will be used often. However, right now they don't really do anything because we don't have anything in our song. So we'll start with the song editor. The song editor is where most of the magic happens. It is a graph of the different tracks and when they are playing. A song is made up of multiple tracks. There are several different kinds of tracks in LMMS. There's instrument tracks, sample tracks, beat slash baseline editor tracks, and automation tracks. Let's take a look at a triple oscillator. Triple oscillator is a good example of an instrument track. As you can see here, there's many different settings you can change. Triple oscillator will take in notes that you play or put into the piano roll, and it will output sound. As you can see, I'm a master pianist. In addition to the plugin settings, which are visible here, there's also many other settings that change the behavior and sound of the instrument track. This tab contains envelopes, LFOs, and filters. This tab contains chord stacking and arpeggiator settings. This tab allows you to add effects that apply only to this instrument track and to nothing else. This tab allows you to configure MIDI input and MIDI output. This tab has miscellaneous settings and uh, there's one. Part of working with instrument tracks is learning how to use the piano roll. So let's take a look at that. The piano roll is where you actually write the notes that get fed into the instrument track in order to create sound. You must create a pattern in the song editor in order to access the piano roll. First, let's create a pattern. Left click on the instrument track in the song editor to create an empty pattern. This pattern, whether it's empty or not, can be moved around by left clicking on it and dragging it. Now let's actually open the pattern. Double click on it and it will open in the piano roll. The piano roll is a graph. The vertical axis is the note that is playing and the horizontal axis is the time it is playing at and for how long. You can create a note in the piano roll by left clicking anywhere. As you can see, it is playing this note at this time. If we hit play, we can see that. That note is rather unpleasant and high pitched, so I'm going to delete it. You can do this by right clicking on a note. Let's scroll down and find a note that is a little more pleasant. It just happens to be the same note a couple octaves down. If I want to make the note longer, I can hold my mouse over the end of the note and click and drag that, and that will change the length of the note. If I want to change the position of the note, I can left click and drag somewhere in the middle. You can also do this up or down if you input the wrong note. The piano roll has many other features that I won't be going over right now. Instead, let's take a look at a sample track. As you can see when we click on a sample track, it's very simple. You can add effects to it, and that's it. Most of the control comes from what you put inside the sample track. In order to add a sample, you must first left click. This creates a container. Like a pattern, you can drag this around. And if you double click on it, it will open a browser where you can add different samples to it. An alternative to using the browser is to use the sidebar. 
The sidebar will have all of your samples, should you put them in the working directory, as well as many samples that come with LMMS. I'm just going to add one here, bellchoir1.org. You can just drag any file, as long as it's a sound file, onto the container here, and it will expand into the whole sound file. Now we can play it and hear the sound file. Neat. Next, let's take a look at the beat and bassline track. If we click on it, it opens up the beat and bassline editor. Similar to the song editor, it can hold different tracks of its own. However, it's meant to create loops that then you can repeat throughout the song. You can have multiple beat and bass lines, and you can create them by doing add beat and bass line. It will automatically add a track to your song editor. These are separate loops that you can then repeat. But let's just take a look at this beat bass line zero. We have this instrument track called kicker. This looks a little different than the piano roll. You can either activate or deactivate these little bits. They're meant to be drums, but if you want to do something melodic, you can actually right click and do open in piano roll in order to manually put in notes if you want to use a bass line instead of a beat. Once you have a pattern such as this, you can actually left click to paint the pattern on and then hover over the edge to loop it multiple times. This results in something like this. Not mind boggling, but at least we're learning how to use the software. The last kind of track is the automation track and its accompanying automation editor. Those deserve a tutorial of their own, so I won't be talking about them here. The other two core components I haven't talked about are the effects mixer and the controller rack. The controller rack is rather situational, so I won't be covering it here. The effects mixer is very powerful and deserves a tutorial of its own, so I will also be talking about it more in a separate tutorial. Finally, let's talk about the sidebar. Earlier in this tutorial, I used the sidebar in order to add a sample to a sample track, but it has many more uses than this. The first option is instrument plugins. Here is a menu of all the different instrument plugins you can add both to the song editor and to the beat and bassline editor. A couple to note are Vestige and Zenet sub effects. Vestige allows you to load VST plugins into LMMS as instruments, which is really useful as there are many different free and paid plugins that allow you to enhance your LMMS experience. Next is Zenad SubFX, a very powerful synthesizer. I found this particularly useful when I used LMMS on a flash drive as a portable installation. The next option is projects. There are a couple projects that come with LMMS, but when you save a project, it will appear in both your working directory and here. Next is samples. There are many different samples that come with LMMS, but when you put your own samples in the working directory, it will show up here as well. Same can be said for presets. There are many that come with LMMS, but you can always add your own. The last two items are just file browsers, one for your home folder and one for your entire computer. That concludes the basic tutorial for the interface of LMMS. Thank you for watching.